good morning from the Universal Orlando parking garage. We're headed in today because they've changed a lot of stuff. So first things first, they changed, there's no temperature check anymore. Mm -hmm. They changed the distancing from six feet down to three feet and Mardi Gras completely gone. Now they're setting up for another unnamed event. It's like a summer food festival. So we're gonna have a look around and see if we can see any progress that's happening for that. And we're just gonna do an update. They also have a new tribute store. Oh yeah. That, just, the, just the facade. So they it's haven't not, opened it yet. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to see that though. Yeah. Another thing is Velocicoaster soft opened yesterday. Mm -hmm. We don't know, or I shouldn't say soft open. I should say technical is in technical rehearsals yesterday. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that'll be happening today, but if it does, hopefully then we'll get to get you on Hagrid because right now Hagrid is a 75 minute wait and the park basically just opened. It opened like 30 minutes or no, it opened an hour and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Still 75 minute wait already yeah. for Hagrid. But when Velocicoaster opened yesterday, mm -hmm. Hagrid's went down to a 35 minute wait. So if that happens today, I'm for sure riding Hagrid. Yeah. This is my promise to you. So and, let's do and it. to me. <laughs> and to me. <laughs> Let's head inside. So this is where the temperature check used to be. And you can see they still have some dividers set up. There used to be three different lines, but now there is no temperature check here. You just continue on to security. So they changed the announcement here in City Walk. To three feet or one meter. Yes. There's a group of team members, the clean team, saying hello, hello. Oh, it doesn't look that bad today. Like it's not that crowded in City Walk. This is nice. We'll see what it's like in the parks. The Bubba Gump shrimp is back out in front of Bubba Gump, meeting and greeting. So over here by the Cinemark Theater, there are a couple of restaurants up high, like Bread Box is over there. There's a Burger King over here and a Moe's and a Panda Express. But there used to be a sushi restaurant right there and it is now permanently closed. We never even got to try the sushi there. You know, it's funny because it was like a favorite among the team members. I yeah. always, like, team members always talked really highly of it, but we just never went. Huh. Okay. Because we're headed into Universal Studios, Florida. There is no Mardi Gras medallion up hanging in the arches, and there's no Mardi Gras music playing. So, Mardi Gras, officially over. Such a fun time. It was a very long festival, for sure. They still do have the signs. They've just changed them a little bit. This one says, practice social distancing. Keep three feet between your travel party and other guests. Always stand on the floor markings. And face coverings are required. And also remember to wash your hands. And there's another sign right here that says, guests not properly wearing an appropriate face covering will be required to leave. All right, we are inside Universal Studios. Doesn't look like too bad of a day. First stop, Universal Studios store. Front and center, lots of Velocicoaster stuff. Ooh, Dino Rivals. Do you just like fight the dinosaurs? That's kind of fun. Is this a Jurassic World Uno game? Oh yeah, look at that. There it is. Huh, and playing cards. $13 for Jurassic World Uno. Oh, for $50, they have this Jurassic Park. I don't know if it's a raincoat or if it's a windbreaker. 100% uh, polyester, it might be waterproof? I don't think they guarantee anything like that. So it might just be a windbreaker. I think they're just marketing it as a windbreaker. And then for, oh, this one doesn't have a price on it. Oh, they took the prices off of this one. It must've been mismarked. Jurassic Park hoodie. This one's cool. I like this one a lot. And then I like this Jurassic Park hat for $26. It's like torn up a little bit. Looks, looks vintage, like it's been to Jurassic Park. They've got some masks. These are $8 each or three for 20. We got some Velociraptors ones, one with his mouth open or one with her mouth open, one with her mouth closed. A Jurassic World mask, a Jurassic Park mask, and then a camouflage Jurassic Park mask. Something else that I've never seen before is this Blue Stars Universal Studios neon mask. That one's pretty neat looking. And then they also have a Velocicoaster mask. Man, I kind of want to ride it again right now. It was such a fun ride. You all know that I like to show Despicable Me Minion Mayhem's wait as a judge for the crowd level here in the park. 65 minutes, pretty long, but the crowd does seem kind of light. I don't know if maybe things are changing. Maybe this isn't a good describer of the crowd level. Yeah, I don't know. All of the food booths and Mardi Gras floats from Music Plaza are now gone. And all the tables are gone too. So people are just kind of hanging out on the grass. Just pulled up the app to have a look at some of the wait times. And what did I see? 
Velocicoaster is now open. 90 minute wait. So I think if, if we let that go a little bit, I think Hagrid's will drop down. It's already down to a 60 minute wait. It was 75 when we first walked in. So it's dropping. So I did want to clarify that. I know I said that Velocicoaster is open, but it is not officially open. It's just in technical rehearsals. So that means that if you come between now and June 10th, it could be open, could be closed. They might be closed in the morning and open later. It might be open in the morning, then closed later. Do not plan a vacation around Velocicoaster being open before June 10th. The only guaranteed time that it will be open is after June 10th. The other thing I wanted to mention too is that we just ran into the Ryan family. They said that they rode Hagrid's the other day and the, the wait time sign said it was a 40 minute wait, but they ended up only waiting 20, which was just them kind of walking through the line. Yeah. So the wait time sign might be off a little bit. You could wait less. So maybe that's what, I hope, I, that's what I'm hoping for today. Yeah. There's hashtag the panda up there. Hello. He's waving at Jackson. Do you see that panda up there, buddy? Oh, it should be noted that down here by the New York Public Library, which is just a facade, it's not an actual building back there, there are still some tables. So if you're looking for a really secluded spot to eat some lunch, this is it. Also, the Jurassic World Tribute Store. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm so excited for this. So in anticipation of Velocicoaster's opening, they are going to be opening a Jurassic World Tribute Store and all of the other tribute stores that we've had in this location, including Mardi Gras, Halloween, Christmas, have been greatly themed, like very immersively themed. So I'm very excited to see what the theming will be of the three different rooms inside of this tribute store. So here's my thoughts. All right, so there's going to be a Velociraptor themed room. Oh yeah. With all the Velociraptors, right? Yeah. Then I think that there's going to be a, like maybe a, an amber mine. Theme. Okay. Maybe Mr. DNA is in there. Okay. Then, uh, oh, the bad guy. What's his name? The Indomina, Indomina, Indominus Rex. Right. That's what his name was. He'll be in the final room where the food is, right? Oh, what kind of food do you think they're gonna have? They should have like paleos, like like caveman food. T turkey legs. <laughs> uh, a rack of lamb. A rack of lamb? Yeah, a whole thing that you walk around like brontosaurus ribs, I, like from Flintstones. I feel like they're gonna have um, a lollipop that looks like amber with like a bug, okay. a bug inside. Yeah, I like that. Right? I like that. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, you're, that was perfect. I couldn't top that. <laughs> Definitely looking like a great day as far as line level goes, because Mummy is only a 25 minute wait right now. So just before we get into San Francisco, there's a food truck right here, and it looks like they already have the menu out for what they will be offering. So we are gonna have a pressed Cuban sandwich here, Serrano ham, ooh, $15. Okay, beef empanadas, and then a bunch of beers and White Claw. So as we get closer to Fisherman's Wharf. You can see we're right across from the San Francisco Candy Factory. There's another booth. This one's still called Summer Bites. Oh, they're like in there getting ready. What are we gonna have here? This is Melts. Your choice of flavors melted together on a French loaf. Three Cheese Classic for $9.99. Smoky Brisket for $11.99. Vegan for $10.99. Mac and Cheese. Your choice of White Cheddar for $9.99. Carnitas for $11.99. Wow, there's kind of a lot of stuff here. So I'm wondering if this food festival is just gonna be called Summer Bites, because it seems like that's the, the name of the both of the booths that are over here. And you can get some sides of cream of tomato soup for $5.99, or white cheddar mac and cheese for $5.99. And we've got a little thing over here that says, vegetarian, vegan, or gluten-free. So you can see the mac and cheese is vegetarian, the vegan is vegan. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, and then the cream of tomato soup is gluten free. So I was about to say maybe not today, but then I looked over and one of the booths is putting out napkins and utensils. I feel like maybe we're here on the correct day. So uh, I was talking to the camera a little bit about how we don't know what the name of this is or when it's going to start. Right. But while I was doing it, I looked over and the food booths have started putting out napkins and utensils. Ooh, soon. Right? Maybe today. I'm hungry. Right? Me too. <laughs> this one has like a brisket melt. Good. Yeah, it does. So I wonder how many booths there will be. I don't know. We have no information about it. this. is like a surprise event. I like it. So a team member just walked by and they said, are you ready for some new food? And I was like, yeah. I was like, are you guys opening today? He's like, yeah, maybe in like 15 or 20 minutes. So 
What's happening today? There's another tent over here, but it still has the menu out for Mardi Gras. So I don't think that this will be part of whatever it is. So I don't know if we could call this a food festival because I don't think there's like a ton of booths. It's just like a food truck event. Okay. I'll yeah. take it. Jen brought up a good question. She said, do you think there's going to be lanyards like we had for Mardi Gras where you pay $70 or whatever and you get 16 punches? I don't think so. If there's only like a couple or like five booths maybe. I don't think they would have a lanyard for that. Gotcha. So I think it's not a full out food festival. I think it's just like a, a little food truck event. So over here by the exit to Men in Black through the MIB gear shop, there is a step and repeat for class of 2021. And in normal years, Universal would have Grad Bash, an event entirely for the graduating class. But this year they're not having it. So there is a nice photo opportunity. If you're graduating this year, come out here and take a photo here at Universal. So as we were passing by Twirl and Hurl, we thought, hey, this baby should go on that. I think this is a ride he yeah, can no, actually I, ride. Yeah, we'll go and check. There's a there's like a height requirement over there. Let's see, buddy. So we'll go and see. It says guests 48 inches and below must be accompanied by an adult. So that's Jen. I don't know if there is a height requirement on here. Handheld infants are not permitted. So he can walk and he can sit on his own so he can ride it with mama. So there is a goal to this ride. You don't get points or anything, but you're supposed to move your saucer up and down so that it comes close to these icons here. Like you can see Homer there, and then over here is Nelson, and you can see they spin when the saucers come close to them. All right, so Jen and Jackson got in line at 1042, and we'll see. Oh, he looks like he's getting excited for the ride. We'll see how long it takes them to get on. So I know this is only one example on one ride, but it seems like even though the distancing has been re reduced to three feet, most people are staying at six feet. So that's good. It is now 1101 and Jen and Jackson are getting on the ride. So pretty close to a 15 minute wait. You see them? There they are. Yeah, the perfect spot. He kind of saw me. Please relax and enjoy the sincerity of everything I'm saying. If your ride is about to begin, he looks very please excited. remain seated until the very end of the ride. And remember, this ride is being run by friendly ride operators, not evil aliens who eat people. Fools, you are our captives, and you waited in a long, boring line. <laughs> to earn your freedom, you must help us attack Springfield. Oh, are they coming down? You could hit the wrong side of a complete. Do it, human. Do it. <laughs> Jackson! Now you may undo your seatbelts and exit the ride as happy, relaxed, and gullible as I like as they were in major. Space Oddity. Jackson! What did you think? What did you think? Did you like it? He liked the very beginning and the very end. And the rest of it, he was kind of like, I don't know. Buddy, did you enjoy yourself? I had fun. I like how there's no line now. I know. Just because they moved the wait time up to 20 minutes. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, it only took you guys 17 minutes. But it was listed at 15. Yeah. Two more minutes, that's not bad. Yeah, it's not yeah. bad. But it's interesting to see once they raise up to 20 minutes, the line goes down. Like, never mind. People are like, no, no, it's not worth 20 minutes. Worth 15, right. not 20. All right, so we are looking for what I believe is the last food location, and we're back behind Transformers. And if you turn to your right right now, this is where we're headed to. Another booth that says Summer Bites. We've got Elotes, Esquites, Arepas. Ooh, we got three different kinds of Arepas. Carnitas, Beef Picadillo, and Queso. Oh, wow, there's a lot of stuff here. And cojina, cojina, flash fried potato balls, sounds really good. Wow, and then pineapple or watermelon with tahini. Ooh, wow, this sounds like everything's really good. Okay, what are we gonna do? Also, I didn't even say there's all of these different beverages. Oh, okay, so this one is just, it's a, it's a non-alcoholic one. I think we might try it. It's called a man, Mangonada. 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 It sounds really good. Yeah. Well, it sounds like Jaws is happening. Oh no. 
We they're doing a... like a midday show in the oh, lagoon. Oh, is that the? Oh, yeah. okay, gotcha. Okay. Which one are you gonna get? I'm gonna say we need a bigger mango nada. <laughs> Um, I feel like we should try a little bit of everything. Okay. Yeah. I did want to point out that this menu does not have any of the icons saying if it's vegan, vegetarian, or gluten-free. For instance, the Sasquitas has plant-based jalapeno mayo, so I believe that this, well, but the cojita cheese is, it's vegetarian, not vegan. So this is the elotes asados. This is their traditional elotes asados with a plant-based jalapeno mayo, ancho chili powder, cotija cheese, and cilantro. And this was $5.79. They also have another elotes asados with just cilantro butter and tahini. I am thoroughly against corn on the cob, but Jen loves it. I think that it's, you just have to, you're just, you're gonna get it in your teeth. You're gonna have corn teeth. It's gonna happen. You just have to accept it. Yeah, I don't want that. Well, I have a beard too. Yeah, so it's, it's like you have you. a corn beard, <laughs> and then corn goes up your nose, and then you got corn, corn nose. Right. I don't think you're doing it right. Maybe you're doing okay. it wrong. I'm gonna try this. Oh, a confused look. Like, what's that flavor? Well, I didn't get a whole lot of flavor. Well, also, it should be pointed out that they gave you a lime. You can put a lime on oh, there. Oh, no, I forgot. But also, there's a bunch of cheese underneath. Like, the cheese fell off when they put it on. Okay, let me see. It. I got a... This lime was pretty oh. dried out. Let's see. It is really good, but... There's not a lot of flavor. It's only on one side, the, the seasoning and the sauces. So we also got it off the cob, and I think this will be more delicious because there's more seasoning throughout. So it's like you'll get seasoning in every bite. So Tim just told me that I had stuff all over my face. I've accepted it. Yeah, I, I already that's know what you said. You said you gotta get ready for corn face. <laughs> I got it. So I like the jalapeno mayo. It's like a plant-based jalapeno mayo. I like it a lot. It is getting me that like burning around my lips sensation. This is good. The corn is very nice and like tender. It's kind of a sweet corn. Um, I would like to try their cilantro butter version of this corn though. Sorry, so. I'm totally distracted by this. What are you doing? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Piece of watermelon. What is that, buddy? <laughs> There's your a whole corn? new meaning to playing with your food. <laughs> Uh, as a side note, I did see people going back up and they had a little bottle of tahini that they could put more salt or more like seasoning on your corn. Oh, would they? Okay. I don't know if they will every time, but I saw the people doing it today. Okay, because I feel like it could have used more tahini for sure. Yeah. So I'm going to put the lime on the corn off the cob and give this to you to try. Okay. This, these limes are just too dried out. There's no juice. Oh, okay. So it didn't, I didn't get any lime juice. I'm sorry, but... That's okay. I'd like to know what you think of this one. Okay. And this is the Esquites Asados. It's a traditional Mexican roasted corn dish served off the cob with a plant-based jalapeno mayo, ancho chili powder, cotilla cheese, and cilantro. So it's very similar to the Elotes Asados traditional. It's just off the cob. And this was $5.99. All right, let's give it a try. Oh yeah, that's good. Oh, a lot of flavors going on, but... And the biggest flavor that I'm getting is the cheese. Oh, a little bit of spice in there too. So it does have like a chili powder, an ancho chili powder as well. Like a smoked chili? Yeah. Yeah. Would huh. you order that again? Maybe not. On, like today's kind of like a cool-ish day. It's only uh, 78 degrees outside right now. So if it were hotter today, I don't think I would order it. Okay. But on like a nice cool-ish day, pretty good. I think what I like about this is that it's more charred. I don't know, can you see that? How charred yeah. it is yeah. in here than it was on the cob? And I like that that flavor. So you like that better? I think I do, but I would like to try the cilantro butter corn on the cob. Okay. So next, time. next we got the beef picadillo arepa. So this is a cornmeal cake filled with mayo, ketchup, cilantro, and beef picadillo, which is a savory beef. And this was $9.29. Pretty good. There's not a lot of flavor to it though. Kind of tastes like beef bouillonnaise. What do you mean? Like, like, like spaghetti sauce. Really? Mm-hmm. Sorry, I know this angle is a little bit weird, but we are um, doing the best we can with our tripod here. So, let's see. I get what you're saying about the like spaghetti flavor. Yeah. Because it is like a, it has like a tomato 
it's not tomato based, but there is like a tomato flavor in there. Um, I'm getting some pepper, like green pepper. And I feel like there's olive, like green olives in there. I'm getting cheese at the bottom. It's delicious. I really like this, but I like the beef picadillo flavor a lot. It's very savory. There's not much spice to it. That was something that in the last food festival I said, I thought there would be more spice, but that's not the beef picadillo flavor. It's not a spicy flavor. It is a, just a savory, just a delicious savory flavor. I do think the arepas are kind of thick. So I'm actually getting a lot of that. That cheese in the bottom is great. Oh, I um, want some of that. Okay, I'll save it for you. I really like it. I would order that again. Um, they did have another one that was a carnitas with avocado. That one sounded delicious as well. So maybe next time we come, we'll do that one. This is the watermelon fruit cup. It's served with a packet of tahini. So check out my cute little package of tahini that they gave us with our watermelon. I imagine this is similar to when people say to put salt on your watermelon. Yeah. I love this. So this one, we are not 100% sure of the pronunciation. I've heard it pronounced two different ways, cocina and cojina, but this is a flash fried potato ball with savory chicken inside. This was $5.49, and this was a big favorite during the Mardi Gras festival at the Brazil booth. I wanted to break it open so you could see what the inside looks like. Oh, it's just like a ball of chicken in there. Yeah, a little potato ball. It has a very light, like, breadcrumb, like, panko breadcrumb on the outside. Delicious. I feel like we had these at Mardi Gras and we liked them. Yeah. Um, Jackson really liked them, so I'm gonna give him some. Let's see what he thinks. Are you still a fan? Not yet? He said, wait a minute, I remember these. He has watermelon all over his face. <laughs> Did you, are you, what do you putting think? Your, he's putting his Cheerios back. He's like, um, let he's me. Like, let me rethink this Cheerio bite. What did you think? Did you love it? All right. What do you think, buddy? We got a fan. I think so. You want to hold it? There you go, buddy. Yeah, he likes it. <laughs> a kiss on the hand is. My continental. But Cosina is a girl's best friend. <laughs> um, I would, I would 100% order these again. These are delicious. Love them. I like that they look like little teardrops because they were just like dropped in the oil. But they don't taste. They're not greasy. No, not at all. This is great. My only issue is that you only get four of them in the order. I know. Yeah. Give us more. I'd like more. Yeah. These we, are really good. We want more. This is the Mango Nada, a traditional beverage blended with mango, lime, chamoy, and tahini for seven dollars. You can also get it with a Monte Alban tequila floater for twelve fifty. Not gonna lie, already had some of it. Really like it. I really enjoy the tahini flavor. It just gives it like a little bit of bite. So the tahini and the lime in there, it's a little bit sour. I like it a lot. It's like a sweet and sour flavor. Okay. Super refreshing because it is like a slushy type of drink. And I imagine that with the tequila on top, it's probably amazing. So, highly recommend trying this one. And if you are a tequila fan, I would try it with the tequila. Like the tahini gives it like a, you know how there are spices that will like, when they hit your tongue, your tongue kind of feels like it dries out. Mm -hmm. That's what this tastes like. So it's not, I don't know, it's, it's one of the most bizarre drinks I've ever had in my life. I like it a lot. I don't know that I would order this. Really? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Not for everyone, I guess, but it is for Jen. So we've been eating stuff and I keep reaching for the mango nada. It's growing on me. I like it now. Like I, I would order that now. I feel like I'd like less tahini though. Like just like a sprinkling, a light sprinkling. <laughs> no, more, more I'd tahini. like maybe try it without it. Like mango lime? Sounds really good to me. Are you clapping, buddy? Oh, you love the beat builders. <laughs> Do you love those beat builders? So we've already seen these other two food booths. This one has the pressed Cuban sandwich and the beef empanadas, but the one I was really interested in was the melt one down there with the brisket melt. Just noticed something interesting about this food booth. The markings on the ground still say six feet, even though they've dropped it down to three. Oh yeah. And I, I don't, don't think they're six feet apart. I think yeah. they're probably about three feet apart. I think they're six feet from the end, like from that point. To no, this because point. my arms are three feet. This is the smoked barbecue beef brisket melt for 
This looks really good. I just want to show you the back of this. Look at that cheese oozing out. That looks real good. And this is like perfectly grilled. Oh yeah. Yum. So I feel like that first booth that we went to, the portions were a little bit smaller, kind of sort of felt more like a tasting menu. Whereas here, full size portions, like I, can get, I got a full sandwich. It's so good the camera couldn't even handle it. Wow, that's good. Yeah. Two thumbs up on that one. So it is a sliced brisket, a thinly sliced brisket. I like that. I feel like I would call it a chopped brisket. You think it's chopped? What kind of cheese is this, do you think? Whatever kind of cheese it is, there's a lot of it, which I also am a fan of. The bread is super buttery. Love that. It has a little bit of a barbecue flavor, but it's not super wet. One more bite for science. Holy cow. I gotta say, when they do these things, I know there's a lot of restaurants, like I see a humongous line for Richter's right now, so we're right by the Richter's Burger location. They need to come here. Yeah, there's no line for this. Get this brisket. Real good. Yeah. This is the Carnitas Mac and Cheese for $11.99 with white cheddar and breadcrumbs. This looks amazing and it's real big. Like so, a really big bowl. The other thing that's cool about this is that if I don't eat it all, which I won't, um, it comes in this container. I can take it home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to take this home. Theme park, pigeon, mutton, some, summer eats. Oh, he went behind the table. <laughs> oh, that's real good. Okay, I'm not really a fan of macaroni and cheese. Isn't this macaroni and cheese a little bit watery? But with the with the meat, the carnitas, this is great. I would order this carnitas on its own. It's like barbecue pulled pork. Really good. Get a little bit of everything. It's still really hot. Okay, so Together, I, I like it together. Yeah. Let me just taste the macaroni and cheese by itself. The beet builders are going. Can you hear them? Yeah. So the macaroni and cheese is not super flavorful. It's just kind of bland. I'm gonna try the pork on its own. Oh yeah. Real good. It's like not dry at all. It's really nice and like tender. I'm gonna get another humongous bite of the pork. While you're doing that, I'm gonna do some ASMR in the background of eating a grilled cheese sandwich. That pork is so good. Wow. That pigeon tried to get you. <laughs> Theme park pigeon is trying to get me. Don't get me. I'll share my carnitas with you, pigeon. I won't, I really won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta say. This booth was a major win. They should just serve the pork on its own or like in a sandwich or with... Nachos. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Pork nachos. Give me those nachos. That. Good idea. So the one thing that I like, not the one thing, one of the things that I like about this booth, this food truck, is that these are not recycled menu items. So with the other food trucks, most of those items were already served at Mardi Gras. So these are new items for like this Summer Bites event. Yeah. So I do like that they did that. So we did find out that there are three booths currently, but they are going to be adding a fourth over where we saw that tent earlier. Oh yeah, so that was where the Bahamas area was for the Mardi Gras festival. Right, and we also found out that this will be running through mid-August. Yeah, so you have some time to come and check out the food. Yeah, and they're and open every day. Yeah, it's open seven days a week, which is great. So you can come on like a lighter crowd level day and get to try everything maybe quicker. Yeah, even though today is a Saturday and it seems like the crowds are starting to die down on weekends. Yeah, which is awesome. Oh yeah. And then I was talking to one of the uh, team members and they did say that like if we really support the event that they may even add more food possibly. So you just never know. Yeah. So. I really enjoyed it. I, l I liked all the food that we tried. Like even though it is only three or four booths, it's nice to have some variety. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. And like you don't have to just go to Richter's or go to Mel's or go to the same places that we've been hundreds of times. Yeah. You get some new stuff. Yeah. Also, uh, side note, Hagrid's is still a 60 minute wait today. I'm so sad I'm not gonna be able to ride it today. So we, w we will come back and ride it. Yeah. With Pinky Swear. Oh, it's this happening. again. It's happening. What was the last pinky swear? That we're going to try the, the dole of nachos. Okay. So, so I'm making a two, lot of promises. Two pinky swears so far. <laughs> but all in all, a fantastic day. It was a great, like, we've been avoiding the parks on weekends. Today was not bad. 
Yeah, this is great. I think we might try to maybe go back to the parks on the weekends. We'll see. Yeah. We're dipping our toes in. Yeah. So all in all, a fantastic day. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. We're the Ryans from Pittsburgh, and now it's time to pay the price.